when the dinosaurs fell, new giants emerged. From the African savannas to the Australian outback, giant mammals that would have towered over their modern-day descendants swiftly conquered nearly every continent. But in the ocean, whales took their time on the road to massiveness, and that slow expansion could explain why they're still the biggest creatures around today. The first whales appeared 50 million years ago, well after the extinction of the dinosaurs, but well before the appearance of the first humans. Their ancestor is most likely an ancient artiodactyl, a four-legged, even-toed hoofed land mammal, adapted for running. Cetaceans thus have a common ancestor with modern-day artiodactyls, such as the cow, the pig, the camel, the giraffe, and the hippopotamus. The whales that we know now have a remarkable aptitude for aquatic life. Millions of years spent in the sea have favored changes that make life easier in this new setting. Blowing holes have replaced nostrils and are now found at the top of the head. Front limbs have become fins, and rear limbs have vanished. All of the body's hair and fur have been lost. It is simplified. The spinal column has become linked to a robust, horizontal tail. The distinction between whales and their nearest living relatives is muddled by these changes. However, whales, like humans, are mammals. They have lungs and breathe air. They are warm-blooded, meaning they maintain a constant body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Their offspring develop in the mother's womb, are nourished by the placenta during pregnancy, and are nursed after birth. The ancestor of today's whales, the first cetacean, is believed to be Pachycetus, a quadruped measuring 1 to 2 meters long. Skeletons discovered in Pakistan indicate the animal had typical artiodactyl ankles and a typical cetacean skull. Unlike today's whales, the species was not aquatic, and its ankles are testimony to its running ability. It is still considered a cetacean, especially on account of the morphology of its inner ear. The shape of its teeth suggests that Pachycetus was carnivorous, like modern-day whales. Are you familiar with the water chevrotain? Measuring approximately 80 centimeters in length, this herbivore is native to Africa. It is unique in that it takes refuge in the water to escape its predators and can remain there for four or five minutes. The water chevrotain is the closest living animal to Endohyus, a distant ancestor of whales. It is believed that the descendants of the first land-roaming cetaceans increasingly gravitated to an aquatic environment, in some cases to seek refuge from danger, just like today's water chevrotain, or to feed. As today's artiodactyls are all herbivores, biologists believe that cetaceans evolved because some of the herbivores in this group appear to have changed their diets to become carnivores. However, this thesis is not unanimously accepted, as some scientists contend that the ancestor was omnivorous. Ambulocetus, a four-legged whale whose legs were probably webbed, was likely able to both walk and swim, while bone analysis has revealed that it could live in fresh and salt water alike. Its inner ear was adapted to live in an aquatic environment. From the region around India and Pakistan, the ancestors of modern whales then migrated to ultimately reach the ranges of today's cetaceans. What path did they take, and when? The fossil record can answer this question, but it is currently too fragmented to get a clear picture. The discovery of a four-legged whale fossil in Peru in 2011 shed some light on the cetacean's journey. This ancestral whale supports the hypothesis of a westward migration predating a northward migration less than 10 million years after the appearance of the first whales in the region around India and Pakistan. Today's whales are divided into two major groups, odontocetes, or toothed whales, and mysticetes, or baleen whales. Their common ancestor, which lived about 34 million years ago, probably lacked baleen and could not use echolocation in just 5 million years. Whale species have diversified, probably due to rapid ecological changes in the oceans. 15 million years ago, another rapid diversification of cetacean species occurred as ocean cooling changed the currents. At the same time, the number of mollusk and crustacean species consumed by some whales also increased. 
The first mysticetes measured 5 to 9 meters in length, approximately the size of today's mink whale. Whales are believed to have reached the size we know today only about 4.5 million years ago. The sudden growth of mysticetes coincides with the cooling of the climate and the formation of large ice caps in the northern hemisphere. In spring and summer, ice-trapped nutrients are released into open water and accumulate near the coasts, driven by currents. Plankton accumulate in these areas and grow substantially when they come into contact with nutrient-rich waters. Plankton, until then widely dispersed in the ocean, begin to form seasonal concentrations, sometimes separated by thousands of kilometers. In this new reality, size becomes a characteristic subject to strong selection pressure. Thus, the most corpulent individuals, with their greater reserves, can travel longer distances and take advantage of these recently formed feeding grounds. As for the smaller ones, they gradually disappear and give way to the era of the giants. Being bigger has many benefits. Giants are more likely to be at the top of the food chain and therefore considerably less susceptible to predation. On the other hand, they are much more at risk of extinction in times of environmental change or crisis. Whales are still evolving nowadays. Ecosystems are regularly modified and interactions between species are dynamic. Hence, there is always a need to adapt to changing conditions. Modern-day whales are subject to several evolutionary pressures, such as climate change, the decline in prey abundance, and ocean pollution. Their large size makes them particularly vulnerable to the lack of food. Bigger, heavier, better divers. Whales are often thought to be superior to humans in many respects, but sometimes it is the loss of genes that is at the root of their adaptations. Genes linked to feeding, including those responsible for saliva production, or those that code for the reabsorption of sodium by the kidneys, have disappeared because they have become useless to whales which, with a few exceptions, live in saltwater environments. Their lives at sea make the lubrication of food unnecessary, and sodium deficiency is virtually impossible. As for the rest, this activity in whales is influenced by the loss of the gene responsible for the production of melatonin, a well-known hormone that regulates the sleep cycle. This adaptation is probably because in cetaceans, breathing is a voluntary activity, and falling into a deep slumber would likely increase the risk of drowning in these marine mammals. Other genes that have disappeared in cetaceans are those that are useful to terrestrial animals but which cause problems during diving due to the extreme pressures their bodies are subject to. Researchers have notably observed the disappearance of genes that facilitate blood clotting and those associated with fibrosis and other lung issues in some humans. Another gene that has indirectly increased the risk of DNA mutations in diving cetaceans has also vanished from their genetic makeup. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time. time.